Graham, nice to nice to nice to to chat to you. You got so got your your Lancashire shirt top on. You just couldn't <laughs> give it away, could you? You just no. I never, once I, you I, wear I, it, you can't give it away. <laughs> no, exactly. I was kind of always hoping that I would come back, and it's been a great week. Um, yeah, it's been obviously a few a few rough weeks as well along the way. Obviously, since my retirement, but also like this this week has been it's been great. I mean, just getting back into the swing of it and. Uh, with all the good news and everything, just delighted over the moon. When um, I spoke to you at Eggbirth, when the, the day that kind of the, your retirement was a, was announced, you said you were kind of hopeful that you might be able to continue coaching with Lancashire, but you thought it was perhaps unlikely. So, kind of talk us through the process of what what what's what's changed. Yeah, I, look, I think we all find ourselves in a, a very tricky situation, and, and with obviously the, everything that's going on at the moment with COVID. So, I think Lancashire were acting rather like quite cautious I suppose uh, which is probably the right thing to do I mean everyone everyone's took a bit of a hit at the moment and uh, you know if we went maybe as a year a year ago I, I, I kind of and, and it had, this this kind of situation would have come up I would have felt, felt as though my chances would have been quite high to get a role uh, obviously finances have t- in Lancashire have took a massive hit as, as everyone has so I had to just obviously try and think about my future away from Lancashire a little bit um, but then also I, I was desperate to always come back if I can um, I feel as though the memories and the, the way I've kind of been with the players and obviously of course of course the coaching staff have been held me in good stead of, to when a role potentially does come up then I can take it with both hands and I suppose I kind of in a, in a kind of strange way I've kind of planned for this over the last probably three or four years since moving Durham um, it's always kind of been in the back of my mind that coaching is what I want to do um, and obviously since moving to Lancashire Glenn and, and Paul Allen and everyone at Lancashire has been been fantastic and, and given me an opportunity to learn and develop and it's and it's kind of where I am now which is great. I mean you, as a player only just a couple of years obviously with, with, with Lancashire but clearly that connection that bond to the club is quite strong bearing in mind I mean, you just don't you describe it as bit, almost like a second home for you, but bearing in mind how long you were with Durham, it's quite... Have you been surprised by how much you've kind of really embedded into the club? I'd, I'd like, look, I, I think the way I am as a person and the dedication that I kind of give towards everything that I, that I do, and that's, that's from a cricket point of view and from a coaching point of view, is I throw everything at it and I give it the best I possibly can. And that's one thing... I mean, obviously, from taking the role now, is that I'll do. Um, I'll 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 throw everything at it and give it my best shot. And I think the players understand that. Um, it comes with downsides, of course, with being away from my family a little bit more and be slightly longer hours. I've never realised how potentially good a profession being a professional cricketer is. You know, you go in, you train, you leave. Uh, and obviously, as a coach, you do spend a bit more time there. But I, you know, I I love this club. I do. I feel as though that obviously. I've not been there here for that long, um, but also I, I feel as though that it's it is a second home. I do feel as though that I, be, I belong, you know, to the Red Rose as such, and, and and I'm desperate to kind of win more silverware and develop some of these young lads from the academy to to be professional cricketers and kind of help them along their journey to be to be professionals. Obviously, Glenn Chapel made the pro the the, the the route from player to coach and then ultimately on to, to, to head coach. I just I, I, watching him do that has that has that helped you to progress from potentially a player into in, into coach? Yeah, I think I think that's what I always wanted to do, and obviously following in his footsteps is, is, is great. Um, I do class myself as very very lucky. Um, I just, just I'm just trying to think of someone like Mark Chilton, for example. He he didn't get a coaching role straight away. He spent a bit of time in a college or in a school and a private school, and then eventually kind of got that dream job back at his home county. Um, of course, I did that a little bit with going to Scarborough College and doing a little bit of stuff away from Lancashire. Um, but ultimately, I found my way back here where I'm going to be working full time and, and uh, challenging myself and developing to be, you know, the best coach that I can be. Um, whilst, of course, helping some players along their journey. I do class myself as very lucky, but as I said, I, you know, throughout my playing days as well, as I, I, I do work hard, I do give everything I possibly can um, 
ultimately to be as good as I can be. And I'm determined as a relatively young coach to, to, to be, to do, and, you know, to start my journey again and, and uh, commit to everything I do. Yeah. I'm sure when you started out as a young player, Graham, you, you obviously, you learned as you went on and got better and more experienced clearly as, as, as time progressed. Do you expect that will be the case in a coaching capacity? You will, you will learn, you'll get better, you improve, you do, you'll do some good things and bad things. Yeah, and I, and I suppose yeah. I mean, you, look, you're exactly right. I think when you when you start off your career, from, certainly from a playing point of view, is that you you don't see failure as as a, as a something that you're going to learn from. Obviously, when you when you're my age and you just finish your playing days, actually failing is quite a good thing. And I think, of course, I don't want to fail as a coach, but also I, I, I'll I'll use those experiences to try and make me a better person and learn. And actually, to be honest, I mean, we did the academy last night with an incredibly exciting group of young lads. And we've got some unbelievable coaches that are developing the, 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 the young lads as well. I mean, I've got a, an opportunity to learn from, you know, Chris Bembo, Mark Chilton, uh, Steve Titchard, you know, Glenn Chappell. We've got an unbelievable amount of coaching, coaching staff, which that me as a person can learn from and develop my coaching Um style I suppose and, and philosophy and everything that goes goes with it really um but I think my strength is 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 determination and everything to try and get Lancashire um winning trophies as simple as that I'm sure Glenn has a lot on as a as a head coach yeah, because he comes he does. because he comes with the job um but clearly obviously um you look at his his background in coaching and his playing career as a bowler I just wonder how that relationship that dynamic do you think that will work as you as the club's full-time bowling coach and Glenn Chappell's the head coach? Well, I think, I think the reason why it's going to work so well is that he's, he's constantly challenging. Uh, and I love that. I mean, uh, as a young, as a young player or a young coach, I, like my job is to challenge, challenge a young, young players to get better. And I think his job is also is to, is to challenge me to be a better coach and, and produce you know, some good, good players along, along my journey as a coach, really. And I think that's great. Um, you know, will we always agree with things? But, you know, only time will tell. Um, and I don't think it's a bad thing if we don't. You know what I mean? I think it's, I think it's important that we, um, we have, an, of course, a focus and a drive to, to, um, to, to develop players and make them better. Um, but also, look, they are in charge. You know, players are in charge of their own destiny and their, their own journey. No, that's a little bit cliche, but it's our, it's our job to um, well, it's my job to take a little bit of stress, a little bit off off Glenn, and so he can concentrate on being a, a fantastic head coach that he is. Um, you know, so he can concentrate on 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 other things, and I can look after look after the balls. And in, just in terms of the, the the season starting, I mean, I know we're, we're a few months away, and goodness hmm. knows what's going to happen between now between now and April. But I mean, obviously, fingers crossed, we we get a season starting at some point in in April, and ideally with people there watching. Yeah, I, I, look, I think that's got to happen. You know, I really, I really, really do. I know from a playing point of view, I'd be desperate to play in front of crowds again. Um, I know the lads are unbelievable. I mean, the, the lads have started this week and they've been so excited. I've never ne never known a group so so excited ever to to come in and train and, and get the ball in the hand and stuff. But obviously, during crazy times that we're in at the moment, um, you just got to be so careful with the way you train. You know, you can't shine the ball. All these things that you've got to th that you that you're looking at, at now. These these need to be cleared up before the season starts. Um, Fingers crossed, you know, with all the vaccinations that are going out, you know, we'll be in a better position to be able to, you know, hold host cricket. I'm in the hotel at the moment at the at the ground, host cricket here because it, you know, it's, what an atmosphere it is when we get when we get people running around and, and playing here. So, yeah, I mean, the lads are excited and I'm really excited as well. I think that I think we're we're looking forward to getting going. I, I guess just finally, you, you could, are you just planning for the season to start and? That's all you can do. Hope, hope for the best. Plan as if it's going to go ahead on time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, I think we, we, it's important to plan for the first of April as, as such. Um, but then, or, or Sussex away. That's that's the, the the goal right now. But also, you can't look too far ahead. And I think that's actually almost like one of my strengths. I think when I was a younger when I was a younger player, um, I I did definitely used to think almost 
what do I expect in, in April? You know, that that's how far I would sometimes be looking. Actually, if you just block, like, you know, kind of reduce it to blocks. And as a coach, I think it's important that you think that way because we just don't know what's ahead. You know, there might be another lockdown in February. We just, we just don't know at the moment. So it's important that we go session by session, you know, week by week. Um, which actually is quite a good way to go about, you know, you know, when you come to the philosophy of bowling your best ball, you break it down as much as you possibly can. And it's, and, and it's a good way to go about it.